Hi, I'm Mark from LM Small Engine. Today we're working on a Husqvarna 142 chainsaw. The piston scored in it. That either happens, you know, you run it too lean or not enough oil in the gas, or sometimes they forget to put oil in the gas. But, anyways, the piston scored, so we're going to put a new cylinder and piston on this. So, hope you enjoy the video. Look, okay, there's a couple things you can check and to see if you're your piston is scored or not first thing you can do is we'll check the spark plug we usually on a scored piston they won't they won't start or they'll start and they'll run for a little bit till it gets hot and quits or it'll like backfire through the carb or something but you can see that spark plug that thing got hot and you can there's no signs of oil burnt on there. This one could be they actually put like regular gas in there or something or not enough oil in it. That's one, one way to check. And the second one will take the take the muffler off and look at the side of the piston. Take that cover off when there's two torque screws inside here. And don't lose that gasket here well if you look in there and see the side of the piston right there see all the lines going up and down it scored when we pull the piston out i'll show you too but you know before you go ahead and order the parts or tear down the saw you know check them check the spark plug check the compression check the muffler and that's how you can tell so what we're going to do is we're going to tear this whole thing apart. I'm just going to do it step by step. I hope you don't think it's boring or not. But I'll show you my version of an easy way to do it. Some people have different ways, and that's fine too. I'll just show you how I do it around here, which I think is a simple way to do it. So we're just going to go ahead and take the bar off. Normally on a smaller saw like this, you know, people don't want to invest the money to get it fixed back up. But I guess this is a has some sentimental sentimental values to the people that own it. So I told them I'd get it running like new again for them. Replace the chain, that's pretty wore out too. But we'll get it running first. Take the air filter off. And we'll take the two nuts off, take the air filter base off. Go ahead and take the throttle linkage off. And these two little bolts here hold the carburetor around there in nine thirty seconds. And then there's this plate that goes down to here. That's a Phillips. There's a ground wire that goes on the left hand side there. Just make sure you, we put that back in. We put it back together again. And we got this off. Now we'll go ahead and take the recoil off. And we'll go ahead and take the flywheel off here. I believe that's a half inch. And we're not going to take the nut off all the way. 
I'm gonna screw it back down till it's almost flush. You don't want to ruin them threads on the crankshaft. Then you got your magnet over here and your counterweight on this side where the, the aluminum on the flywheel is thicker. And we'll just kind of like stick some on there and apply some pressure. I should take that coil off so I don't break that coil real quick, I guess. It all has to come off anyway. There we go. Screwdriver here. They kind of do it where these thicker pieces of aluminum are on the flywheel. Just kind of get a little pressure in there. And I come around and do the other side. The shaft's tapered. And let's go ahead and take our nut off here. And a little washer right here. Don't lose that washer. Okay, we got that off now. Okay, now we'll go ahead and pop this handle off. These screws are an Allen wrench. They're not a torque wrench. So on the handle, two of the washers go on the bottom and the two longer ones go on the sides. So I have to remember that. Keeping all the parts and the screws each part in different little piles. Here's a bushing. You can't lose that. That goes right here. Now we're going to take the clutch off. And there's an arrow where it says go this way. To off. They have tools that go on there, but if you use like a dull, dull chisel, you put it like right here or right here. You usually can get them off with this one good tap, just like that. You don't want to hit on the ends here because you can break them off. So keep all that together. Take that screw out there, that's a torque screw. Well, that's a feeling. Before I put this back together, I'm gonna get all that sawdust and stuff cleaned up off of that. So now we're getting closer to the taking off the head. I'm going to take the oil pump assembly off. Take that off and then we're Phillips. Looks like it might need a new gear on the oil pump because that is as stiff as can be. And the teeth are all wore out, so we're going to have to find a new oil pump for the bar for that. Now we'll take these two bolts out there for the intake. That rubber piece off. I'm gonna go ahead and blow that off. We're gonna get to the four bolts that hold the base of the crank together.
And now we pop the motor out. And there we go. A little motor right there powers that chainsaw right there. Pop these four off of our torques. Take that off. Pull that out. And you can see the see the side of the piston. That's what a scored piston looks like. I don't know if you can see that in there. You can see where that light shine there. That's all scored there too. Sometimes you don't put enough oil in the gas. Sometimes someone actually puts straight gas in it, or you're running your highway too lean and it gets hot. You know that's how hot it's like easily can score the two cycle because the only lube all this stuff gets is that oil in the gas because there's no oil in the crankcase on these two cycles. The only lubrication they get is in that gas. So I'm going to go dig up some parts and we'll reassemble this thing. Okay, here's our new cylinder and piston. You got to reuse your base. And there's there's a couple different ways to do to do this. There's one where you can get a fork in the set you set this in here like this and there's a fork you put on and and this sits still and, there's a, it, and you can slide the cylinder on top that one ain't too bad on single ring single ring pistons but when you deal with like two ring pistons or three ring pistons i'll show you the way i like to do it there'll be people out there that say the way i do it, it's not right but there's bunch of different ways I'm just gonna try showing you the simplest way to do it that way you don't have to buy special tools and stuff like that but I'll show you the way I just I do it some people will hate it some people might not but anyways on the side of the piston there's like a little pin pin stuck in there on the top half and on the ring, you see it's kind of kind of beveled. So that underneath part, that's what goes under that, that little pin right there. And you got to be careful on these. You don't, you don't break these rings. In fact, I've done it before too. I wanted to get a name brand rebuild kit for this, but they really couldn't afford that. So we got this on eBay. You know, as long as you take care of it, they're good, but see what I mean on that ring? You put the bevel part like that, so when it gets squeezed together, like that. And this arrow on top, that always points to the exhaust. So here you got your intake. Here's your exhaust. So when you put in this arrow points to the exhaust. So, and when I put this together, I love to use like WD-40 or any kind of lubricant like that. It's not going to hurt, hurt nothing. And it's going to lubricate everything. So, but first of all, we'll go ahead and put the piston on the rod and stuff. Just kind of showing you all this stuff now. So in case I forget to say something later, here's our new... And here's our new clips in here. You have a knife for that, but I'll get all this laid out and we'll we'll start to assemble this. Okay, so we gotta take these ring keepers, gotta take them out of this one so we can put the new one on. And these here it's best to use like a, a pointy Pointy tip, pointy tool to try getting them out. Try something like that or like that. 
We just got to get one side out. The new clips you have are a lot better than these. And there you go. There's our old piston there. Let's check our seals. Make sure they're good. If your seals are bad, it's a good time to replace the seals. These actually look in really good shape. Okay, so we're going to put the piston on the piston rod. And you have to have that arrow towards the exhaust. So you get your case. And this side here, this is where your bar and everything sits on. So this is your worm gear for your oil pumps. You know, you know the crane's going to sit like this. And here's the intake. Here's the exhaust. So you know it's going to go like that. So that arrow is going to point that way. And here are the new clips I'm talking about. There's a neat, good place to put a needle nose on them to get them started in there. So what I like to do. I like to get one put in on one side. It really don't matter what side. I just like to get one put in. And make sure it fits in that slot. And just kind of turn it. Turn that keeper. Make sure it's locked in that slot. So we got the one side in. So. It'll go in like this. So we'll start the pinning on this side. Just get it to the edge of here. And just push it in. And push it in all the way so you can get the other keeper in. And just spin it around. Make sure it's in that groove. Okay, and just double check it. Over here is your flywheel side. Here's your side where the clutch there thing goes on because that's your worm gear for your oil. You make sure that ring is having the center of that pin right there because right here it's tapered. So when you push in, it'll automatically push that ring together while you put in. That's one thing good about these. The two, two ring ones are a little bit harder. But I emphasize you cannot use too much oil on these. And what I like to use is WD-40. Spray some in there. I like to take a rag, a nice clean rag. Just if there's any dirt or any filings or anything in there, just make sure it's all cleaned out. Then spray it again. Because that's the lube you got to the oil and the gas gets to everything. And go ahead and spray a little on this. And double check that pin in the ring to make sure it's like right in the center there. So we'll stick this in here. And you look look in there and make sure that ring's set in there. And go on the exhaust side and look there too. And that's how you install the piss in there. Now on the bottom here, I'm going to wipe this all off with some carburetor cleaning the rag because we're going to put some silicone on this bottom base. Make sure you're bottom bottom pieces all nice and clean and these are pretty much universal you can turn them around but i always like having the letters and numbers facing the chain chain side you know you can turn it this way it's all it's the same you can and you put a little silicone around here and on the edges of the seals so it seals that gap right there there's a couple different kinds like this this dirt go that's what steel uses when they rebuild size, that's a steel. Well, it's not a steel brand, but that's what steel uses. And my personal favorite is this adhesive. 
It heats to the ceiling. That's what I like using. You can buy it at any hardware store, and it really don't cost that much money. Put kind of a medium or light coat on that. You don't want no air leaking in there or anything. The other side here, I'm going to put a little bit in that corner. That corner, that corner, and that corner. Just kind of seal that up. And press it on. Now we can go ahead and put it in the base there. I gotta clean my hands off here. And grab our four mounting bolts here. Okay. And there that is. Now we can go ahead and put the rest of together. Okay. I, I forgot one very important step can't believe I did that at least at least I caught it right away see that I did I forgot to forgot to put them four bolts in well, my haters would have loved that well, at least I caught it in time anyway. It's a lot harder doing this when you're taping it than it is doing it by yourself. I'll guarantee you that. But we'll get it all figured out here. There we go. Yeah, good thing I caught that. That's why I kind of like laying everything out. Where I took it off, so I kind of know. And I just saw them four bolts there after I put it in here. I go, geez, them four bolts. So good thing we caught that right away. But well, being this thing's back out again, I might as well just go ahead and put the muffler and stuff on now. So we'll go ahead and put our gasket on here. And we'll put our protective cover on. Okay. Now we can go back to putting this back in. Anyways, where the worm gear is, put it over on the bar side. There. I do apologize for that. Sometimes I do get ahead of myself. Now we can go back to putting this thing together again. In fact, I'm just going to take this all the way off. Just, I'll show what I'm talking about when I get this back off. Taking these apart is pretty easy, but when you put it back together, you just want to take your time and make sure you do everything right the first time so you don't have to tear it all apart again. Gotta make sure that it fits on there good. Every night you can see on both sides that that rubber tube is all the way on. So, there we go. Now if I can just keep it all together again, putting this on will be in good shape. There we go. Now you know that rubber that rubber intake tube's on all the way. Because if you have one end's folded under or something, it's gonna suck air 
between that and the head instead of having all the fuel air mixture come through here and it's never going to run good. So now, now we can go to do this now. I better put them two screws in there. Don't want to ruin that gasket right there. Allen wrench screws. Uh, look in here and double check it. It looks awesome there. Let's go ahead and get this flywheel put on. And on the flywheel, the flywheel keys built right in the flywheel and it goes in that little slot on the crankshaft and it still pops in there just like that and on this washer it's kind of hard to tell but it's kind of like coned the cone part sticks out against the nut it's like it's almost like a lock washer and that's a half inch Get that nice and tight. Now we can go and put our coil on. And all you need on this to gap it is a regular business card. Just rotate it around till the magnet is up here between these two bolts. Stick it in there. Doing it like that. And these here are torques. Make sure that ground wire is on that bolt there. Okay, I'll hook up the wire right here. And just roll that out. Just like that. Now, Let's go ahead and put it on this base here. We'll grab our fuel line. And that goes in this hole right here. Right up through there. And squeeze the bushings together so everything slides together. Like so. Now I'm going to put this screw in right here. Let's take like a little screwdriver and see where the hole is. Because on that rubber bush, you got to kind of line it up. Leave it straight there. And that's also a Torx head. Make sure these bushings are squeezed together so that slides in there like that. And that's like that. Is there a duct housing here? A little hole over this. Like a long tab right here. There's a little slot for that that helps hold it into place. I put our carburetor on. <laughs> Almost screwed up again. I gotta put that dog on. Gasket in there. There we go. Getting to be a long day. Hook up our fuel. In. And we got to grab our little plate here. We got to lift up this ground wire. 
Let me get this under there. And then we're two Phillips screws. I'm not going to tighten them all the way right now. I'm just going to get them in there so we can move the carburetor around so we can get our carburetor bolts in here. Nine thirty seconds, I believe. If you had that plate on there loose or tight, it'd be harder to get these lined up. That's why I just like starting them two screws till I get this lined up, and I'll tighten them two screws down. Get them nice and tight. Now we can. You can Tighten these two up down here. Now we got to put our throttle linkage in. And that sits there like that. So stick it in the hole and put it in that slot. There that goes. Choke's working. The fast idle's working. Now we can put the bases on it, the air filter base on. Five sixteenths nut driver or eight millimeter will work too. Get them nice and snug. And I'm gonna put a new air filter on there. The other one's kind of scuzzed up. Get them nice and snug. I'm going to go ahead and throw a plug in there because I don't want to get no dirt. Okay. Slowly start to look like a chainsaw. Now we go and put the handle on it. We got these four screws here. The two shorter ones with the washers go on the bottom. These go on the side. We got this rubber bushing we got to put on. That slides right in here and it goes in that hole there. So we need an Allen wrench. And we'll use the long ones here. Let's get them started. I'm not going to tighten them right now. Just don't want that rubber boot to fall out. Well, we go back and tighten these two up. Okay, now we can work on the oil pump and stuff. And like I said before, that oil pump gear is in bad shape. So I'm going to go find one real quick. Okay, I took the worm gear and pump out of the housing here. As you can see, it's really wore out. And I did have a new new gear here. So we're just going to pop this one here out. And this little flat spot right here when it spins, that's what pumps oil from this side. From the oil tank, it pumps it onto here to get to the bar. So it's kind of, kind of a neat pump set up real simple right so we'll just discard the old pump I'm gonna spray a little bit of oil in here just a little bit just to kind of keep it lubricated till the bar oil starts flowing through then we'll put it in the housing and there's like a little little dent right here that goes where that pin is Like so. Make sure it spins freely. And these are horizontal. This is pieces sticking straight up. These holes are on the side. 
Then we'll set it on there and stick in there and we'll spin the flywheel till it falls down into place. Now we can put our two screws in there. And go ahead and tighten them up. Okay. I'm going to put this washer on here. Just going to set it on there. And your little needle bearings here. I'm going to put a little bit of grease on there. I use white lithium grease. Just center that up. Let it work its way down there. See how nice and free that spins? Put that on there. Put our clutch on there. And like as we took it off, just use a doll chisel and just tap it a few times on each one and that's how you do that now we go ahead and put our recoil assembly on And that's a Torx. <laughs> Getting there. Spark plugs all tight and everything. Missing a screw, I have to find me a screw there. Then we're gonna bend this tab back down because that tab acts like a holder. So I'll gently tap it down. Okay, I'm gonna put a new chain on. This chain's pretty well on its last leg. Okay, I got me a new chain now. Make sure it's on the sprocket here. Make sure everything's lined up. Loosen the adjustment screw because the new chain needs stretched out. There we go. And I'm sure everybody knows this when you put a new chain on, you run it for like about 30 seconds and it'll loosen up a little bit. Then you just go back and loosen these two bolts. Tighten your adjuster screw so you got the right tension and tighten it back up. Kind of anxious to hear this thing run. When I get this done, when you break in, break in a new cylinder head and stuff, I have a special tank gas can that has like an extra ounce of oil in it to give it a little bit of extra lube till it breaks in. A little bit more oil is not going to hurt. Not gonna hurt nothing. The worst it can do is foul out your plug, and believe me, replacing the plugs heck of a lot cheaper and easier than doing what we just did on this. Before like the first tank of gas, I recommend like using like another 
Heck, put like an extra half ounce in your oil mixture. For the break in period, it's all snugged up. Put some fuel in there and check the bar oil and see if we can get this bad boy started. All righty, put some fuel in here. Like I said, I got a special tank here for doing this. Has a little bit extra oil in there. You only really have to do that on the first tank of gas. Just for the break in period. <laughs> Not totally empty, too. That's probably what burned out the oil pump. Okay, let's see if we can get this thing started. Okay, let's give her a try. So this one don't have no primer ball on or nothing, so just slip it to the on position, pull the choke out, and that automatically set it to a fast idle. Once it pops, then we'll push the choke in. And it'll run on fast idle, hopefully. Okay, we'll push that in. Runs like a new saw. When I get done videotaping this, I'm just gonna sit on the ground and idle for a while, just let it break in. But I want to talk and appreciate you watch this long video. It takes a lot to do it, but for a root and saw, you put a little time and effort into it. You have a brand new saw again. So as you can see, that new oiler is working. The chain's all nice and wet. So, anyways, I appreciate you watching this video, and you guys have a good afternoon. Bye.